Hi everyone, Sam here. Today we're going to talk about using Visual Studio Code for developing ARM templates. Now, obviously you can use any sort of editor for developing your ARM templates, they're just JSON files. Um, you can use a text editor, you can use Visual Studio, um, but today we're going to look at using Visual Studio Code. And it tends to be my editor of choice when I'm, when I'm developing ARM templates because it is, it's a lot lighter weight than Visual Studio. Um, you know, opens quickly, doesn't take so long to load all the, all the projects and so on. Um, but also, it's a great editor with lots of really helpful extensions and tools that can make life easier when developing these templates. So today we're going to have a look at how I set up Visual Studio Code to work with ARM templates, um, which is hopefully useful for you if you're getting started down that route. So we've got a freshly installed copy of Visual Studio Code on this machine here. Nothing's been done to it, this is straight out, out of the box. So the first thing I'm going to do when I when I open this up is have a look at what extensions I want to install, um, because they, these are going to be pretty important to bring the functionality specific to ARM template development that I need in Visual Studio Code. So if we click on the uh, extensions section, and the first thing we're going to look for is search for Azure Resource Manager. The first thing on here is the Azure Resource Manager tools. Now this is a Microsoft developed extension which brings language support for ARM templates into VS Code. So it adds things like um, referencing variables and parameters. It lets you go and do um, find definitions, peek, uh, and so on, and lots of other handy functions. So we'll click on install and install that. Now if you've not used Visual Studio Code before, what this will do is it'll go away and install the extension. Um, and then when it's finished, you're going to get a button here which says reload. Basically you need to reload the UI to get that extension running. So that's finished, so we can just click here, reload, and we've now got that installed. So just have a quick look at that in use. Let's go and open an ARM template. Got one on this machine. And so we can see here, this is a fairly lengthy ARM template, and we can now do things like, so we've got a variable named here. I can go here and go so go to definition, and it will take me straight to that variable. Um, you can also use the option to peek the definition, so it will pop up here. Um, you've got language support for uh, autocompletes um, of certain things. So that's the first thing I start with. If we go back to our plugins list and search again for Azure, Resource Manager. Um, the next thing I installed is the Azure Resource Sn Manager Snippets extension. And this is a little bit of self-promotion because this is, this is an extension that I've created which brings snippet support for ARM templates into VS Code. So if we just install that, it's fairly quick to install. And if we want to see that in action, if we open up a new file and make it a JSON file, we can now start typing ARM and we get a whole list of snippets that we can then use for deploying ARM templates. So we start with an ARM template skeleton, which will deploy this. And then let's say we want to deploy a storage account, and that'll deploy all those sort of options for us. So that can be a really useful starting point for when you need to write ARM templates from scratch, um, and you don't want to have to go and look up all of the syntax. Um, you can just use the snippets and uh, deploy the bits and pieces you need. Okay, so next up, Previously, I would have installed a tool called Code Outline, which would which allows you to get a sort of an outline view of um, your JSON file. Um, but you don't need this anymore now because this is now built into the tool. So if you go into the File Explorer and go to Outline, just drag that up, you can now see we actually do get an outline of the JSON file directly in VS Code. So I can see all my parameters, variables, um, resources. It's not quite as nice as the one you get in, in Visual Studio in that your resources are, are numbered here rather than being named. So it's not quite as nice, but it is quite useful for exploring uh, things if, you, you know, if you're looking to find, find a particular parameter or, or, or variable and so on. Okay, so next up, when I'm working with ARM templates, generally at some point I'm going to have to do some PowerShell, even if it's just writing some PowerShell to run the ARM template. So it's really useful to have the PowerShell extension installed. This is another Microsoft extension, um, and it brings a load of language support, syntax highlighting, code snippets, IntelliSense. Um, so we'll install that one. Along with PowerShell, um, I often find myself working with the Azure CLI as well. So we're going to go ahead and install the Azure CLI tool, which brings um, similar sort of things, IntelliSense snippets, um, 
and being able to run CLI commands from inside VS Code. Um, so that's a useful thing to have installed as well if you if you use the CLI. Obviously, if you stick to PowerShell and never use a CLI, you don't need that. Um, but I, I tend to use both. Now, VS Code has Git functionality built in. So if you're storing your ARM templates in a Git repository, which I recommend you do, um, then obviously you, you can clone and work with those repositories directly in VS Code in the, in the Git tab. However, most of my um, repos are stored either in, in GitHub's, which works fine, or I do have a number of things stored in Azure DevOps repos. Um, so to make life easier, particularly about authentication, you can install the um, Azure repos extension, like another Microsoft one, which will make it easier to work with Azure repos, particularly when you need to authenticate to them, but also if you need to do things um, like uh, create work items and and so on. You can do a lot of that with this. This also works with uh, Team Foundation Server as well. So if you're using an on-premise version, um, you can hook up to it with this. Another interesting extension that I tend to install is is your account extension. So this installs a load of tools to allow you to easily do things like sign in to Azure, sign out, and so on. So if we just have a quick look at that. So to bring this up, you use the uh, command to bring up the palette in, in VS Code, which is on Windows Control Shift P. And if we go to Azure and say Azure sign in, and that'll, that'll log us in through the browser. So if we bring up the terminal and run an Azure PowerShell command, you can see we're already logged in and we can get the data back straight away. One of the other useful features of the Azure account plugin is I can go back to the palette for sure, and you can see I can open an instance of the Cloud Shell directly in VS Code, either the PowerShell or the Bash Cloud Shell. So if we click on that, what that will then do is ask you to pick a directory, and it's going to connect your Cloud Shell. It's going to log you in already with because I'm already logged in using the account extension. It's going to log me straight in with that, um, and then I can then run in Cloud Shell directly in VS Code. Now, obviously, there's not a great deal of difference here than if you just run PowerShell in VS Code with the Azure commandlets in, if that's all you need to do. One of the benefits of using Cloud Shell is obviously that if you have files that are saved in Cloud Shell in, in your Azure files or, or OneDrive, um, you can directly access them. Um, your commands are then running in the cloud rather than on your local machine. And also, you've got access to all the other libraries that are installed with Cloud Shell. So that might be useful for what you're doing. It might not, but it's worth knowing that it's there. Back to the extensions. One last extension we're going to install today is an extension called Prettier. This is a great tool for just formatting your, your code. It'll do uh, better code formatting than the, the default VS Code extension, uh, and it's quite useful for making things look nice. Okay, so speaking of making things look nice, um, one other thing I like to do with the default install of VS Code is to set up some themes and some icon themes. So we'll look at the icon themes first. So this, this controls um, the icons you see in um, in here in the in the uh, file explorer. Um, the defaults are reasonable but there are some nicer ones out there. In particular I do like the material icon theme. So if we click on that we'll just install that and this gives you, you can see here there's a, a massive array of icons for particular file types, um, folder types, those sort of things. Um, so this is, this is quite a cool thing to, to install just to make things look a bit nicer. The other thing I like to do is install uh, some themes to, to, to visually change the, the way things look. Um, you can have a browser if you just type theme, it will show you some of the uh, most popular themes. One I'm liking at the moment is the Atom 1 dark theme, so we'll install that. Reload. Now, you'll notice that neither of those themes we installed there have actually activated yet. So they, they're installed, but we need to activate them. Now, you can do that by going into the file menu go into preferences and first we'll look at the file icon theme click on that and it'll give us the choices and we want the material icon theme and then we'll do the same thing with the color theme you can also use the uh, shortcut key there control K control T we'll do that and we want atom one dark and there we go we've got our new theme installed okay so the last thing I like to do is to tweak some of the settings of VS code just to my my preference and um, so we can do this by going into file Preferences, settings, and we've now got a nice UI to change these settings. You can also go and edit the settings that JSON file directly if you prefer working in, in the file, but we'll look at this, this option here. 
Now, the first thing I like to change is the mini map. So if we hop back to the code file, you can see this, this map on the right hand side showing you the layout of the code. I don't find this very useful. It takes up room and I, I don't use it. So I want to turn that off. So if we just go in here and search for map and you can see here mini map enabled, we'll just turn that off and that's gone now. Another thing I like to do is make sure that I have format on save ticked. So this, whenever I save a file, it's going to use the prettier formatter to actually format that file on save. Another thing I like to check is just that I've got the sh default shell set. So when you install the PowerShell extension, it should set that to PowerShell as your default terminal, but just make sure that's that's what it w what we want. Um, potentially we could change that to use PowerShell core um, if that's what we're using, but that's fine for what I'm doing. And then a few Git settings I like to change. So firstly, turning off confirm sync. I don't need it to ask me to confirm when I want it to do a sync. And the second one is to turn on smart commit so that if I don't have any stage changes, it will just commit everything. That's my, my preference. And turning on fetch on pull. So again, those are my personal preferences for Git. You might have different preferences, so that's fine. Uh, the last thing is I like to turn on tab completion. So those are the, the basic settings that, that I change. Um, I'm sure you'll find yourself as you start working with, with VS Code, you might make some other changes um, based on your workflow and how, how you work. So that's everything installed. That's the settings set up. That's our theme installed. Um, now, the last thing I wanted to cover is is another plugin, but it's I wanted to leave it to the end because this is a plugin that makes a lot of what we've done just now a lot easier, particularly if you are moving between machines a lot. Um, so there is a if we look in the plugins list and search for sync, there is a really useful tool here called Settings Sync. Um, and what this lets you do is synchronize your settings between different instances of Visual Studio Code. So you only really have to do what we did just now once, synchronize this, and then you can push that out to all of your instances of Visual Code on, on other machines. Um, it uses GitHub and Gists to actually store your settings so you can make them public or private depending on your, on your preference. Um, and if you look at the extension, there's a fairly extensive instruction manual on how to set this up. But effectively, you're you're give, using a personal access token to access uh, a gist, um, and in that gist is stored all of your settings. Um, and so you can see here, it's gonna it's gonna inc that includes your settings file, which has just be edited, any key bindings, um, launch files for specific uh, code launching. It's not relevant to ARM, but if you do other development, um, any snippets that you've added, uh, any extensions and extension configurations, and any configurations for your workspaces in the file explorer. So that's a really useful tool to make sure you don't have to keep setting up um, your VS Code set up when you get a new machine, or if you've got a work machine and a home machine and you want to you want to keep the um, settings between the two in sync. It's a really useful tool. So that's a really quick run through of the bits of Visual Studio Code I used for developing ARM templates. Now. I also have a ton of other extensions installed for other things like Azure Functions development and working with storage accounts and working with Cosmos DB and so on. Um, and so you, you know, I certainly recommend you just have a look through the extension gallery and look at your specific topics. So if we do a search for Azure, you can see there's a whole host of Azure based um, extensions for specific things. Um, but we're just thinking about resource manager templates at the moment. That's my very basic setup. If you're doing something differently or if you have some new cool tools or um, shortcuts or anything that you'd like to share, please comment and uh, I'd, I'd be really interested to see what other people are doing. Um, I'll put the links to all of the extensions I'm using in the show notes um, and uh, let me know if you've got any questions or comments. Thanks for watching today and I will see you next time.